What's up, everybody? It's Kyle once again, your host of Unlocking Your Inner Strength. I'm one of the world's leading experts with fasting, with knee injuries, with mind mapping. So I'm going to bring it for you every time I'm on here. And I've developed my expertise in those areas through a deep passion. Always application through myself first and then sharing that knowledge that, that I come to know. Last week, I believe it was Wednesday, I was out with my buddy Richie and, and Sugar Shane shooting a rifle because we're going on a pig hunt this week. Just practicing a little bit with it with the rifle we're going to be using. And Devin reached out that Matina, our silver lab, had got one of the chickens. Now, it's the second time Matina's got a chicken. The first time we were able to save it, we had Rip Van Winkle come over. It was a Sunday night. He's an animal dentist, and he stitched it up. We were able to save the chicken amazingly. None of the vets wanted anything to do with it. Well, this time, Braxton was coming to put the eggs away, and they left the gate open we have right here in the garage. You have the door, you know, upstairs door. The kids left it open. Devin was putting the eggs away before she knew it. Matina was outside, had one of the chickens pinned. She killed it. It's unfortunate, but it's a good lesson for the kids. We did a little ceremony up on the corner. I buried it uh, up up in the, uh, the dirt up there. But it's a good lesson. The kids were sad. A lot of teachable moments within that. They know what they got to do, making sure they keep the gate closed now. So all in all, it's a win. And this past Friday, Saturday, I had a great mastermind with a lot of my good buddies, Vince, who you guys have heard me talk about a lot. It was really cool. I had the opportunity to present, and I think I came across very well. My topic was how to be an expert in almost anything, which first time I've given that talk, so I was pleased with how it went. But I, the, the thing is, guys, I knew when I was putting that presentation together. So a lot of times I'll think about stuff. There's one of the chickens right there. I'll think about stuff. And the way my time has been the past, let's say, six weeks, doing so many things, right? It's like I've got... It really makes me hone in even more on my, my time management, energy management. Like, there's no wasted time. Unless it's scheduled, then it's not wasted. It's it's recovery time. So I went to the library. I skipped jiu-jitsu. I went to the library last Thursday after our leadership meeting for Renewal Strength. I had about an hour and a half. I said, I knew what I wanted to go over in the in the presentation started making slide after slide. It was extreme of consciousness. And that's how I write, too. When I write, I don't have anything outlined. I have a title. That's it. Boom. Go. No edits. Never look back at it. Never reread it. None of this stuff. So when you tap into something you're passionate about or not, I should say you can tap into the ether, the, the space, the ideas, the inspiration that's floating all around us at any time. You could tap into that and just kind of download everything and then you output it. I'm just a messenger in my case, right? I'm just a messenger. It's coming through me. Put it out to share with the world. Anyhow, what I'm going to talk with you guys about today, which I figured it's timely because we have a upper body joint uh, seminar coming up at the end of the month, how to bulletproof your shoulders, elbows, and wrists, along with Steve Parenti over at Steve Bork's tennis club it's gonna be awesome excited about my part but we're going over injuries joint pain how do you do that from a physical therapy point of view how do you overcome that with strength training how do you bulletproof yourself over the years one of the things through becoming a, a, a patella tendon rupture expert the body is the body the process for healing the body is pretty much the same your body is brilliant. Here come all the chickens now. I see one, two, three, four. Four out there. One's trying to go up the steps. She goes up the steps, so you got to watch because the dogs are up there. Anyhow, the body follows the same system, and I have certain principles that I have learned to be true. I have direct knowledge of this. I've applied it many times with myself and hundreds and hundreds of times with knee patients around the world, knee clients, 
and clients at Newell Strength. So let me tell you about it because we all suffer injuries from time to time. Sometimes they're nagging. Sometimes they are not that big a deal. Sometimes they can be crippling. There's actually video on my YouTube channel when I ruptured my first patellar tendon of me in a wheelchair working out even before I had the surgery. I knew how important it was for the healing process. So when you get injured, one thing, so let's say you break your arm or you have some type of shoulder, elbow issue, there's something going on and you don't want to use this side. Let's say it's your right side or you can't use it, even if it's in a cast. Your body, the way the nervous system is wired, has a crossover effect. What I mean by that is if I train my left side, my right side is incapable of training, the, the effects from training my left side carry over to the right side. So you can slow down atrophy, meaning muscle loss. You can keep and even build strength. So that's one thing. People don't realize this. You have a much higher force output, too, when you train single limb versus double limb. Like, for example, you might find that you can do, if you had the core strength, the 100-pound dumbbells with one arm, but when you're doing two, you can only do 90. That's a built-in governor that your body has, your nervous system has. But when we're using it to overcome injuries, very important to realize you could train the uninjured side and get benefits on the injured side. And the, what that's going to lead into, i got my notes here, is blood flow. Blood flow, especially if your blood is you're fasting, you've got nice strong blood. Blood flow is going to help you heal. You have to pump it though, right? Your muscles are, are like giant pumps. They have to contract. Okay, they have to contract to pump this blood throughout the body. And the more blood we get going, the more blood we're going to get to the injured area, even if it's not direct training, the better we're going to heal. One thing that I know to be true a thousand percent with injuries, and again, I've tested this many, many times, even when I ruptured my second patellar tendon, I followed all these protocols. I went exactly the opposite of what my surgeon told me, even though he became a good buddy, because I had direct knowledge and I'd gone through it once and I learned from my mistakes. Never ice an injury. You can ice for pain. You can do cold baths, cold showers for other reasons, not to help an injury heal. The only time you use ice is when the pain reaches a certain threshold that you can no longer deal with if you don't want to take your pain medicine, which I don't I recommend. Pain medicine, you get off of that stuff quick. Stuff is nasty. But you use heat and compression when you can on an injury. Heat and compression. Heat and compression. We want to con constrict, right? It's going to help with the blood flow, keep it warm. To keep heat going. We want the blood going through this. We want the blood constantly circulating through the area. So heat and compression combined with physical movement, continuing with your workouts, is going to allow blood to get through that area and help it with the healing process. The last thing that I would say with people when you get injured, it can become dep it could be depressing. It can become a big depressing thing when you get injured and you can no longer train. Those of you that have gotten injured before know what I'm talking about. Like last year when I tore my hamstring damn near off the bone, pretty bad at jiu-jitsu. I mean, it was black. There's videos up somewhere. They were on my Instagram, which got banned, so I don't know where you can find those videos now. But it was bad. And I remember that night I was in pain. I had to train a lacrosse team after the fact. Came home, and that pain was really setting in. Like to the point, it was Devin could see I was physically very uncomfortable. She said, well, you're not going to train tomorrow, right? I said, of course I'm going to. Why wouldn't I train? Of course, I went in and trained. I healed from that thing within four or five weeks. I was climbing Mount Washington last year. So I use all this stuff in my own life. But where I was going with that, with the training, when you're injured, there's certain growth factors that can only reach your brain through physical movement. That's how the brain is wired. The, the workout, as I always tell people, is more for your brain than anything else. Just the fact that you're going to be in a positive state of mind through physical training is going to help with the healing process. Just as if you're always fearful, it's going to depress your immune system. When you're joyful all the time, your immune system is enhanced. Same thing goes with just how your mind feels. Is it going to speed the healing process or slow it down? And to me, uh, this is common sense. 
but it, it but it's not common from what we're told. But when you get injured, you want to continue to train. Train the good side, train the rest of the body. If it's an upper body injury, one side, continue to train the lower body. Figure out what patterns you could do that don't aggravate it. But keep moving. And there's a whole other segment of injuries called tension myositis syndrome that I'll be talking on coming up. Something I'm very passionate about. But when the pain is active, the symptoms are real, but they're arising from the brain, right? They all come from the brain. But let's use a little mind map. I'll do that in an upcoming lesson for you guys on how you can use that knowledge to get out of pain and to train through things that don't have a direct cause, but the symptoms are real. So that's what I got for you guys today. If you go to newellstrength.com forward slash shoulder, that's how you can register for the seminar on March 31st. It's going to be out in Lebanon, going over shoulders, elbows, and wrists. It's myself, Steve Parenti, one of his uh, PTs, Aaron, who's got the Clinton office out there. So it's going to be pretty cool. If you got a tennis elbow, if you got shoulder pain, if you got a weak grip, you're going to want to come check this out. You guys have a great day. Off to create the Rip Dads presentation for tonight. And... First time I'm teaching the Rip Dads is we're going to be going over, one of the things we're going over tonight is semen retention. Pretty cool. Been studying that a lot. A lot of cool stuff behind that. So who knows? Maybe that's going to become my next passion. All right, guys. Like it and leave a comment or share it if you can. Peace.